Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel Dhyani Classes. If you are watching my video for the first time, do subscribe my channel, hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever a new video will be uploaded. So in today's video, we will cover the third part of the chapter, The Rat Trap, written by Selma Lagerlof from Class 12 CBSC. So let's get started. So in the second part of the chapter, we have seen how the rat trap seller told a lie to the iron master that things have gone downhill with me. And then the iron master made a mistake in considering him as his old regimented friend. And then looking at his physical appearance of the rat trap, the iron master invited him to his house and wanted to take him to his house because he thought that the rat trap seller was his old regimental friend and made him understand that you shouldn't be resigned from the army and if I were there at that time, I wouldn't have allowed you to resign. So let's understand the third part of the chapter now with line by line explanation. Further he says, well now of course you will come home with me. So here he is saying that the iron master started telling the parlor that now of course you will come home with me. That means you have to come to my house because in he was thinking or he was considering this paddler as his old army friend and invited the paddler to his house and says to go along up to the manor house and be received by the owner like an old regimental comrade that however did not please the tramp so when the iron master invited him the then the paddler thought to go along up to the manor house and be received by the owner like an old regimental comrade that means this paddler did not like the idea or the invitation by the iron master to go up to the manor house that means iron master's house and being treated like an old regimental comrade that means old army friend so he did not want to go along with the iron master because he knew the iron master making a mistake in thinking that he was his old regimental friend Further he says, no, I couldn't think of it, he said, looking quite alarmed. So suddenly this rat trap seller became frightened and said to the iron master, no, I couldn't think of it. That means he cannot think of coming house or coming home because he never expected that the owner of, his, of the forge would invited him home as a guest. He thought of the 30 kronor. So as you know that the paddler was so alarmed and frightened and when the iron master invited him to his house, he thought of the 30 kronor. That means he was thinking about the stolen money which he got from an old man's house where he stayed for one night and says to go up to the manor house would be like throwing himself voluntarily into the loins den. So he was thinking to go up to the manor's house. That means if he goes to the iron man's house, it would be like throwing himself voluntarily into the loins den. So he thought if he goes to the iron master house with the stolen money, maybe the iron master would ask him from where did you get this much money and it would be easy to get caught. So that's why he is saying that going to the iron master house will be like throwing into the loins den. That means putting into unpleasant place or situation. Further he says he only wanted a chance to sleep here in the forge and then sneak away as inconspicuously as possible. So here the narrator is talking about the paddler why he came inside the forge because he only wanted a chance to sleep here in the forge that means he came inside the mill or factory because he wanted to take rest for one night and it was the month of December so he was also feeling cold and says then sneak away as inconspicuously that means after taking rest for one night he had a plan in his mind to sneak away that means to run away quickly as inconspicuously as possible that means as soon as possible without anybody's noticing the iron master assumed that he felt embarrassed because of his miserable clothing so when the paddler refused to go along with the iron master then the iron master assumed that he felt embarrassed that means the iron master understood that his regimental friend feeling shy or ashamed because of his miserable clothing. So he thought that the paddler feeling shy because of his clothing and whatever clothes he was wearing at that time were only rags. That means clothes were torn and unclean and says, please don't think that I have a, such a fine home that you cannot show yourself there, he said. So here the iron master was trying to convince him to go along with him, his house and says, Please don't think that I have a, such a fine home. That means I don't think I have a big house and you don't have nothing at this time. So you should not feel ashamed or shy and says don't feel sad. You can come with me. So the iron master wanted to take him to his house in thinking that he, he was his old regimental friend 
and says elizabeth is dead you as you may already have heard so the iron master had a wife and her name was elizabeth and he told the paddler that she is dead now and as you may already have heard that means this iron, iron master had already informed him that his wife already dead and why he is telling the paddler like this because he was making mistake or judging him as his old regimental friend further he says my boys are abroad and there is no one at home except my oldest daughter and myself so here the iron master told him that my boys are abroad that means his sons are living out of the country and there is no one at home except my oldest daughter and myself that means he was trying to convince the paddler to go along with him and said i have a big house and in this house he and his old daughter is living there in the house so you can come with me and don't feel shy and says we were just saying that it was too bad we didn't have any company for christmas so it was christmas time and he said the beggar bound that he and his daughter were discussing that they were feeling lonely along any guest for christmas so in this way the iron master also request him to go along with him his house as a guest and says now come along with me and help us make the christmas food disappear a little faster so again the iron master said now come along with me that means let's go i will take you to my house as a guest and says your presence will help us to make the christmas food disappear a little faster that means it would be helpful for us to celebrate the christmas and you will also help us to finish the christmas food faster but the stranger said no and no and again no and the iron master saw that he must give in so here the author is saying that as the iron master was in hurry to take him to his house and suddenly the paddler said no and no and again no that means the paddler completely refused to go along with him and then the iron master saw that he must give in that means the iron master understood that he is not ready to go along with him at all and then finally he had to give in and understood what the paddler said and says it looks as cap though it looks as though captain von stale preferred to stay with you tonight stern stone he said to the master blacksmith and turned on his heel so here daran master is considering the paddler as his one of friend and says it looks as though captain von stale that means he is considering his one of regimental friend named captain von stale because at that time iron master was not able to identify him because of his strange look and says something to stern stone so who is stern stone here stern stone is the name of the blacksmith and the iron master told him that the paddler looked like his old regimental friend named captain von stale and wanted to stay in the forge just for night so then the iron master turned on his heel that means he turned to go but he laughed to himself as he went away so here the author is saying that but he laughed to himself as he went away that means the iron master stood up and started going back home but he was laughing while walking and then turned to go and says and the blacksmith who knew him understood very well that he had not said his last word so when the blacksmith saw his master laughing he understood why his master was laughing and understood that he would have decided something for the paddler so the blacksmith was familiar with his master and got to know why his master was smiling while going back home and further he says it was not more than half an hour before they heard the sound of carriage wheels outside the forge so here he says that it was not more than half an hour that means right before half an hour the blacksmith heard the sound of carriage wheels that means a vehicle came inside the forge and says and a new guest came in but this time it was not the iron master so this time a new guest came in that means someone from iron master's house came outside the forge but this time it was not the iron master so let's see who was there outside of the forge in the next slide he had sent his daughter apparently hoping that she would have better power of persuasion than he himself so here he is saying that he had sent his daughter that means the iron master had sent his daughter to see the paddler and apparently hoping that she would have better power of persuasion that means the iron master thought his daughter has more power of persuasion that means the power of convincing people and he sent his daughter to convince the paddler and bring home and says she entered followed by a valet 
carrying on his arm a big fur coat so as he entered the forge she was followed by a valet that means there was a car driver behind her and he was carrying a big fur coat in his arm for the parlor to wear because it was too cold outside at that time and it was the month of december and further he says she was not at all pretty but seemed modest and quite shy so the iron master's girl was not at all pretty that means she was not really beautiful but seemed modest and quite shy so she was not very showing off but she was quite shy in the forge everything was just as it had been earlier in the evening so here the narrator is saying that everything in the forge was very normal and the peddler was laying near the furnace and he was taking a rest because the iron master had left the forge but this time his daughter came in the forge and says the master blacksmith and his apprentice still sat on their bench that means at it was quiet and calm there and the blacksmith was doing his work and his apprentice that means a person who is learning or understanding the work was also sitting on his bench and says and iron and charcoal is still glowed in the furnace so his apprentice was putting charcoal inside the furnace and due to charcoal the furnace glowed that means it was becoming more brighter further he says the stranger had stretched himself out on the floor and lay with the piece of pig iron under his head and his hat pulled down over his eyes so here he is saying that the stranger had stretched himself out that means the peddler who was laying near the furnace he started stretching himself on the floor where he was laying and says lay with a piece of pig iron under his head so this peddler took a piece of pig iron and kept it under his head as a pillow and then he pulled down his hat over his eyes so due to brightness of the furnace he kept his hat on his eyes and over his face and says as soon as the young girl caught sight of him she went up and lifted his hat so the peddler always slept with one eye open and then what the girl did she immediately came closer to him and left his hat to see his face and she wanted to talk to him and say something to him and then the man was evidently used to sleeping with one eye open so as soon as she lifted his hat from his face she saw that the man was evidently used to sleeping that means she was he was showing that showing as if he was sleeping at that time but at that time his one eye was open he jumped up abruptly and seemed to be quite frightened so here he is saying that he jumped up abruptly that means as soon as the girl lifted his hat immediately he jumped up and seemed to be quite frightened so he got frightened and jumped up and sat on the floor and then he saw there was a daughter of the iron master and says my name is adla wilmanson said the young girl so the girl introduced herself that my name is adla wilmanson and so now we know that the name of the iron master's daughter and her name was adla wilmanson so she introduced herself to the parlor and says my father came home and said that you wanted to sleep here in the forced night and then i asked permission to come and bring you home to us so later on she started speaking with the peddler and said my father came home and said that you wanted to sleep here in the forest tonight that means she said to the peddler that my father told me everything that you are one of his regimental friend and you don't want to come home and wanted to sleep here near the forest and says and then i asked permission to come and bring you home to us so she also requested him to come along with her and said i wanted to bring you home further he says i am so sorry captain that you are having such a hard time so here the author is saying that the iron master daughter said to the parlor that i am so sorry captain that means she was feeling very sorry for the parlor and calling him captain because her father considering him as his one of regimental friend and said i am feeling so sorry for you because you are going through very tough time or you are going through such a bad time and says she looked at him compassionately with her heavy eyes and then she noticed that the man was afraid so she looked at him compassionately that means she looked at him very carefully and very uh, with a very heavy eyes and very sadly so what do you mean by compassion that means a great understanding and love for others so the adla was very kind hearted woman and she always cares about others and then she noticed that the man was afraid 
So while talking with him, she understood that he was frightened and afraid because he was not really the Iron Master's friend. Further, she says either he has stolen something or else he has escaped from jail. She thought and added quickly. So here, when she saw that the paddler was so frightened and the way he was behaving, and then a thought came into her mind that either he has stolen something or else he has escaped from jail. That means she noticed either he has stolen somebody's belonging or he has escaped from the jail and that's why he was so frightened and afraid and says, you may be sure captain that you will be allowed to leave us just as freely as you come. So she was trying to convince him to come along with her and said you may be sure that means she was giving him assurance that there will be no problem at all once you get home and said you don't worry captain you can go anytime but for the Christmas Eve I would like to take to you home and celebrate Christmas Eve with us for one day only and then you can go away wherever you want. Only please stay with us over Christmas Eve. So here she requested him to come along with her and says please come and stay with us for the Christmas Eve. That means they wanted to celebrate his company before Christmas. So what do you mean by Christmas Eve? That means the day before Christmas and says she said this in such a friendly manner that the rat trap paddler must have felt confidence in her. So she requested him very politely and in a such a friendly manner and then the rat trap gained some confidence because she gave him assurance to go away as per his wish and then he felt confidence that nothing bad is have going to happen if they have invited him home. So he was almost ready to go with Edla. Further he says it would never have occurred to me that you would bother with me yourself miss he said I will come at once. So here the peddler said the girl that it would never have occurred to me that means it never had happened to me as you are thinking for me and requesting to take me home but yes I will come once. So finally he agreed to go with Edda because she assured him that he can leave the house as per his wish and he was very happy what the girl had said. Further he said he accepted the fur coat which the valet handed him with a deep bow. So as we know that the valet that means personal assistant carried the fur coat for the partner because it was too cold outside and the valet handed him the fur coat and requested him to wear the coat very politely. So the valet handed him fur coat and the partner accepted it with a deep bow that means he also accepted the fur coat and showed a lot of respect to the partner and says threw it over his racks and followed the young lady out to the carriage. So the paddler took the coat and wore it over his stone clothes and then he started walking just behind the Iron Master's daughter Edla to go to the carriage. So he went along with her to the carriage that means a vehicle and says without granting the astonished blacksmith so much as a glance. So he says that at that time the blacksmith was also sitting there and he became very surprised to see how the Iron Master's daughter requesting him to come home and giving him assurance to leave the house wherever he wished and then the paddler started walking towards her vehicle without noticing the blacksmith and seeing all these things the blacksmith became very surprised that how they are caring for the paddler and says but while he was riding up to the manor house he had evil forebodings so here he is saying that but while he was riding up to the manor house that means while going to the iron master's house he had evil, evil forebodings that means a lot of bad thought was coming in his mind that something bad is going to happen with him because he knew that he was not the iron master's friend and he never joined a regiment or army and he was having such kind of fear in thinking that something bad is going to happen with him. Further he says why the devil did I take that fellow's money he thought. So here the peddler started cursing himself that why the devil did I take that fellow's money that means he was cursing himself that why I had stolen the old man money and thinking all this he was feeling afraid because he had stolen 30 coroners from the crafter's house. So he was feeling that he was caught in a truck trap and something bad is going to happen with him because of the theft he had committed and says now I am sitting in the trap and will never get out of it. So now he understood that I am sitting in the trap. That means he understood that he caught in a trap 
and will never get out of it because he had stolen money and now stolen money is very very problematic for him to hide because he was going to the iron master's house with 30 kroners and says the next day was christmas eve and when the iron master came into the dining room for breakfast he probably thought with satisfaction of his old regimental comrade whom he had run across so unexpectedly so here he is saying that the next day was christmas that means before christmas the iron master came into the dining room for breakfast so when the iron master was ready early in the morning for breakfast he came to the dining room and he was so happy and satisfied to see his old regimental friend and it was unexpected so he was feeling so satisfied that he had come across his old army friend and it was such a unexpected moment and he never expected that he would meet his friend Further he says, first of all we must see to it that he gets a little flesh on his bones. So here he is saying that the Iron Master was so worried about the condition of his friend and then he told his daughter that we must see to it that once he gets a little flesh on his bones. That means first we would make him little bit healthier because he was so weak and thin and he was looking very poor and says he said to his daughter who was busy at the table. So the Iron Master told all these things to his daughter and she was at that time busy doing in something at the dining table and says and then we must see that he gets something else to do than to run around the country selling rat trap. So both the Iron Master and his daughter was planning to give him some kind of job instead of running around and selling rat traps. So they understood that this man is a rat trap seller because there were a bunch of rat traps with him. So in this way, they were trying to help him to get out from his miserable life. So this is the end of the third part of the chapter, the rat trap. Let's look at the fourth part of the chapter in my next video. For more informative videos, do subscribe my channel, hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever a new video will be uploaded. So thank you so much for watching once again. Stay safe, stay healthy.